Hey guys, this is Noah with Learn Meta Analysis, and I recently was asked, what are sensitivity analyses in meta analysis? Like, what are we talking about? So we're gonna go through a super quick overview of what they are, how to do them, and what it looks like in practice. So sensitivity analysis is a vague term, okay? I'm gonna tell you that right now. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Here is what I have seen it mean, but generally speaking, what it is is helping us understand if there are things influencing our results. Now. What these things are depends on the type of analysis that the person is actually referring to when they say sensitivity analysis. So first and foremost, here are the most three most common examples I see when people talk about a sensitivity analysis or maybe a reviewer requests a sensitivity analysis. First is testing for publication bias. Second is outliers and in influential studies. And third is subgroup or moderator analyses. However, I will say that personally, I, I do think that subgroup and moderator analyses are important, but I tend to separate them in my mind from sensitivity analyses. Um, that's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. That's just how my brain works. When I think about sensitivity analysis, I think of publication bias issues, and I think of outliers and in influential studies. We're gonna go over how to do both those things here in a minute. I do wanna give an example of something you might hear, but I personally pretty strongly disagree with at this point, which is I have heard some people say it's testing fixed versus random effects models to see what the difference is on the outcome. Personally, I very strongly disagree with this. The reason is because fixed and random effects models have different assumptions, and my opinion is that this should be driven by the data. Um, so I'm not gonna go rant about that for now, but I'm just going to say I personally do not feel that that is a sensitivity analysis. I feel like fixed versus random effects should be determined by the data that you are using. So that said, let's go look at what these things look like in practice so you can get an idea of what we're looking at here. So one thing that I wanna mention is in regards to outliers and in influential studies. So we're gonna be talking about conventional meta-analysis throughout this video. I'm gonna include this absolutely wonderful webpage from the metaphor documentation in the description. But the thing that I wanna point out is they tell you about all the different things that are part of the influence function down here. And Wolfgang has also told us what some of the benchmarks are for determining if something is influential. So I very much encourage you to review this if you're interested in doing these things in R. The second thing that I'm gonna mention is I'm gonna show you guys some applied examples here using simple meta-analysis software because of how fast it is, but you can also do the same thing in R and I have videos describing how to do this in R as well on the channel. So with that said, let, I'm gonna stop rambling. We're gonna go jump right into this. The first thing I'm gonna do here in simple meta-analysis is check for outliers and influence. So this is going to open up my upload in my other screen. So let me just pick the correct file here and we are going to run the outlier and influence analysis. Bam, we are done. So as you can see, we get a bunch of different data here, our student uh, and all these other things. This is all important, but the column that I wanna draw your attention to right now for the sake of ease is this last column looking at influence, INF. It has an asterisk if something is significantly influential. So that is how we can uh, identify this. And then for the rest of these benchmarks here, like I mentioned before, looking back here at the documentation is a really great way to find out what these different things mean. For example, you might be interested in like a leave one out analysis and things like that. And you can see that there is leave one out analyses included in this function. So there's all sorts of wonderful information here. Like I said, this isn't meant to be a deep dive into what each individual one of these things mean. I just wanted you to see that it's very easy to get this result if you're doing conventional meta-analysis using the influence function. And of course the R code is down here if you want to actually run this yourself. So next, let's take a look at publication bias. Okay, so here I'm just going to upload that same data set. Give me just a second and we're gonna run it. Okay, so the first thing that we have is our funnel plot. This is this is important for us to look at uh, when we're trying to look at influence, but I don't really wanna draw our attention here. The only thing that um, we might wanna be looking at here is for outliers, but we can do that off that outliers and influence data that we had before. So we don't necessarily need the funnel plot to identify that. But one thing that I like to look at is the trim and fill analysis. And the reason is because this will tell us if there are studies missing. You can see here, it says estimated number of studies missing. In this case, it's zero. But if there were studies missing, it would tell you how many, and it tells you it's to the right side, and it would tell you what the overall model result would be if those were imputed. So uh, that's one reason I really like the trim and fill analysis is it can give us an estimate of that, of how much our overall effect size is going to change if those studies had been included. That can be seen as an something that would inform our sensitivity of our analysis. We also have our other 
uh, information here for publication bias, Eggers regression, uh, failsafe N of multiple different varieties. So I'm not gonna go through all of those, but that is basically it, okay? So when we hear sensitivity analysis, it can refer to a bunch of different things, but the main thing I want you to take away from this is it's not scary, <laughs> okay? A lot of times you're like, oh, what, what does that mean? Is that something I'm not doing already? In my opinion, sensitivity analyses are something you should be doing already when you run a meta-analysis. If you're using simple meta-analysis, I walk you through all these steps of doing this. You can see step one, step two, et cetera. So as long as you're checking for outliers and influence, this is gonna be a first big great step in checking for your, uh, the sensitivity of your analysis, in particular, the influential studies, I think I personally find very, very, very important. Um, and then some people, like I said, also, also consider publication bias test to be a sensitivity analysis as well. But you should be doing this if you're doing a meta-analysis anyway. So there's not really any extra steps if you are doing all the steps of a meta-analysis that I would typically recommend. So that said, I'm going to stop rambling because this was meant to be a very short to the point video. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you would like to see any similar videos of just super quick overviews of what something is, maybe there's some confusing terminology out there that you've run into, leave it in the comments. I like making these super quick videos that are just answer your guys' questions really fast and to the point. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, please like and subscribe to help support the channel. Thank you guys, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.